Hello everyone and welcome back to Mark on Motoring. Now today's video is the video that I weren't going to show you today, in fact today's video is actually something that I filmed probably a few months ago now, uh, but with events and other things happening it's kind of fallen down the pecking order a little bit. Um, but before we get into all of that, um, just a little bit of an update as to what's going on. Today I was hoping to bring you a new car reveal video. Um, a few reasons I haven't got round to that. Um, various other things going on at home, uh, the weather getting in the way of cleaning the car, uh, and also yesterday I had a wisdom tooth out as well, so um, yeah, that's kind of took precedence a little bit over um, what things I've been doing for the channel. Um, the other reason is you find me now actually sat in the back of the 97 Megane Coupe and the reason I am sat here with no back seat is because um, this car is about to have a fuel pump uh, put in so I'm just getting everything ready in preparation for that doing because on Saturday I will be at Festival of the Unexceptional. Um, the car has had some cold starting issues um, quite often that can be down to a vacuum pipe which is prone to splitting. Um, I've checked the one in this vehicle and, and that is not the case, this one's perfectly fine. Um, also I know that this car I've done things like the plugs, the starter motor, the battery, um, I've done quite a lot on the car before I actually put it back on the road last year. So um, one thing I did notice is when the car had been stood a while um, if I turned the key, I listened, I could hear the pump priming, uh, but it didn't always want to fire straight away. Once the car um, is running, it was a little bit rough for the first maybe 5 or 10 seconds, and then it was perfectly fine. Um, now, there is no choke on these cars. There was an era where um, everything was done electronically by that point um, through the uh, ECU, which controls the fuel injection system. Uh, anyway, so fuel pump um, is imminently due that's going to be going in this car and hopefully that will resolve the issue i did actually um, try sort of priming the pump multiple times and that seemed to help so i have got a feeling that it is a weak fuel pump which is at fault now something else i'm about to make reference to in the upcoming video that you're about to see uh, where i upgrade the um, head unit in this car and i make reference to um, an optional cd auto changer since making that video i have actually sourced said cd auto changer however i've not been able to install it in the vehicle because um, where i got it from they cut the cable out of the vehicle that the changer came from so I've got a plug on one end, this rectangular plug, um, and then I've just got a cut cable. Now I've tried hunting high and low for a replacement cable. I've tried going through uh, a Renault dealership, the owner's club, um, scrapyard, various other places, and as of yet I've not been able to source a cable. I've not even been able to find a company to make me one. There are cables on eBay, but they're for a, the later tuner list head units that was phase two onwards and many Mark II Clios and other vehicles in the range at that time. The cable I need has two of these rectangular plugs, one to go into the CD changer and another one that goes into the vehicle's head unit. If anyone does have one of these or thinks they may be able to help me source one, please do get in touch either let me know in the comments below um, or alternatively um, markonmotoring at yahoo.com is my email or you can contact me through uh, Facebook Messenger or I'm on Twitter as well. So enjoy the uh, video that is coming up. Um, I will of course catch you in the next one from Festival of the Unexceptional. We've still got that um, unveiling video to do as well so that will be coming along soon as well um, and in the meantime enjoy if you haven't already done so please uh, do subscribe because we've just hit 400 subscribers and if we get to 500 subscribers um, then I'll be able to start doing things like live streams and also community posts where I can keep you updated uh, more frequently much in the same way as I would do on social media. Well, hello everyone and welcome back again to Mark on Motoring. Uh, today's video is probably going to be quite a short one um, and think of it really as an update to a video that I did maybe a year or so ago. Um, in the Renault Megane Coupe uh, 1997, I've still got the original 
factory fit audio equipment which is a radio cassette uh, with a separate display and separate fingertip controls behind the steering wheel and I do like originality and I do like cassette tapes so I did want to keep that. The problem is the uh, original factory model specification for this model um, was a 2x8 watt system. Um, the car is actually fitted with uh, mids in the front doors and tweeters on the dashboard. It's pre-wired for rear speakers but the head unit won't power them. The, um, there's a few other differences as well. The, um, so, sorry, some higher spec cars, um, to elaborate, did actually have uh, a head unit that looked the same but was 4x15 watts so you could power a set of speakers in the back as well um, and it also added a few other features like Dolby and music search on the cassette and the ability to plug in a CD changer for uh, anyone old enough to remember what those are. Um, for younger viewers that's what we all went crazy for after cassette tapes. So anyway, previous video I actually sourced a replacement head unit or so I thought. Um, from the offset, the front of the the fascia of it looked correct, um, but something stood out. The label on top of the actual head unit um, said no CD changer, 2 by 8 watts. So I thought something's not right here. Looked at the back of it, um, obviously I didn't have one to compare, but I thought there didn't look to be enough connections. Uh, lo and behold, I plugged it all up and it was basically exactly the same as the one I already had. So. Uh, that was re promptly returned, uh, and I thought no more of it for a while. Anyway, um, maybe a week or so ago, I was scouring eBay, and this happened to come up. Another um, head unit. Uh, again, this time we've got the correct label, which I don't know if that's focusing or not correctly, but basically um, that says that it's the 4x15 watt model and with CD change control and we've got a few extra um, connectors on the back of here as well that we didn't have on the, the standard model. Now, um, the fascia's got a few little chips around here, it's not in quite as nice a condition as the one I've already got, um, but it, it does look to be the correct model. Now, the seller said this was working before it was removed from the vehicle, however long ago that was, um, and there was no radio code. Now. The code issue didn't bother me too much because um, through the owners club I noticed that other people had actually requested codes and, and been able to get them. Uh, but not only that, I've since discovered that there's actually an app that you can use um, to get these uh, radio codes. So I'll just try and bring this up now on my phone. So it's the um, radio code calculator that we're using and all I do here is you hit the uh, camera tab on there take your head unit and scan with your phone and it's brought me up a code so we'll give that a try and uh, see how that works I'm a little bit concerned actually because I did this before and got the same code a few times I've just done it again and got a different code so We'll see if either of those happen to work. So I've already gone to the liberty of um, loosening up the one that's in here because I was a bit concerned on camera I might struggle to get it out. Oh, just pull that forward. And so we've got our antenna on one side. Here, we'll just release those. Try and remember where everything went. I'm not going to pretend for a minute that I'm any expert on installing car audio. Again, I don't know if this is showing on camera, but um, what we've got here is that this top connect part of the connector. Um, on the new one it's got pins in there, on the existing one I had that's just a blank space so um, obviously you can't plug anything into there. Other than that they do look very similar at the back. So we'll plug this new one up now and we'll uh, power it up and see what happens. Uh, 
Are you awake? Let's go back. Thanks so much. Right, see you next Plugged in. So I'm just going to slide that back. I'm not going to push it quite all the way in. So let's uh, put some power to it and see what happens. Right, so it's asking for a code. Let's see if I can get up this new code here that I had. I'll try that one first. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the thumb wheel to uh, behind the steering column to enter the code. And the uh, readout up here is displaying that code for me. So I've entered that one and it's just saying code, it's not done anything else. So I presume that means I've put the incorrect code in. It's not allowing me to do anything else, maybe I've got to power it off or wait before I can have another attempt. Aha! Success! There's no rush. So we have some Radio 4. Doesn't matter. It's fine. Rory. What are you waiting for? So that's working. So it looks like it, um, basically, I had to uh, let a certain amount of time elapse before it had let me try and put another code in. So I let's see if but before you say anything, just think we've now got a fader. Yep. And there we have rear speakers. So it seems that we've uh, now actually got a working four speaker unit. So who knows, maybe at some point I'll look to see if I can get a CD changer to go in there as well. Um, might also see if I can touch in some of these little uh, chip marks because they do look a little bit unsightly. The. Um, I did actually manage to drop on something else on eBay as well. As I say, the car is pre-wired for speakers in the back, but um, the previously wouldn't work. Also, the parcel shelf in here didn't have um, prov provision for the speakers. So I looked for the speaker grills, the actual factory ones, um, thinking I could probably cut the hole in the top and mount the grills. But then, just by chance, I actually found the uh, parcel shelf cover out of another car with the speaker grills already in and the shelf is actually moulded slightly to take those as well so next time I'm going to fit that in the back and uh, see how that looks so now I'm going to remove this um, existing parcel shelf uh, cover when I say parcel shelf it is actually a, a solid piece of um, pressed steel that's in the back of here it's a coupe not a uh, hatchback so it's a fairly solid structure we've got back there so we'll remove this cover anyway um, I've got the other one here to uh, replace it with and now when I did get it it was a bit uh, a little bit grubby so uh, I gave that a good clean earlier on um, with some sort of upholstery foam and a brush um, vacuumed it all off and everything the um, insulation underneath as well was all sort of coming away so I used a spray adhesive just to stick that back on and just get it all looking a little bit fresher than what it was so let's see um, if I can make a decent job of removing this I did manage to get it out previously um, without doing too much damage the uh, nice to be able to reuse some of these clips possibly now I noticed this um, one in my car Oh, now we're dropping clips already. It's already gone a bit hub nut. Right, mine has actually got four clips across here, but the replacement one I've got has only got two. Now, I believe that it was uh, did have a label on it saying it was out of a phase two, which was the facelift model of this car. So maybe uh, maybe Renault were cutting back with a phase two, saving saving a bit of money by putting only two of these clips instead of four. Or well, in the case of mine, it seems I've only got three. So that should come away now quite easily. 
hopefully. Oh, it's like working in a greenhouse. It's so much easier in a hatchback. Something holding that at the back. One edge is coming away. Freedom! See, easy. It's nice now I get to take advantage of these nice little uh, pioneers that I fitted recently. Well, recently, I say last year. Uh, they're not the most expensive, but I do quite like Pioneer. I used to use Pioneer in, uh, well, I had Pioneers in my old Renault 5 back in the day. I always felt that Pioneer offered a fairly decent sounding speaker for not a lot of money really. I mean, you think what some of these audio upgrades cost in modern cars? I mean I had a Canton audio system in a Skoda and that was about £500 extra but some of the systems that you see on the options list are some of your more uh, premium models, you know, you can be adding thousands of pounds onto the cost of the car. And as I often rant about, I think modern cars are grossly overpriced anyway. Try and get all this to fit back in place under where it's supposed to go. We're almost there. Where's my holes now? It's one side lined up. Yeah, I think we're looking somewhat like. Put my oh, two clips back in. Now off camera, I've just actually listened to this with one of my cassettes. Some tunage from 1995 when these cars actually uh, first hit the road in Europe, a year later in the UK. I say a year later, it was late 95 in Europe and early 96 in the UK. So we've had some banging 90 tunage and it sounded pretty decent. Oh, right. I'm going to put all this back together, give it another test just for fun and then I think it's time for a cup of tea. Because I'm shattered. Uh, in the meantime, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you haven't done already, hit that bell notification. That way when a new video comes up, you'll get to know about it first. Um, and if you haven't already done so, do check out some of the other videos. Um, I've already done a review on this car. And quite recently I've posted up the um, road trip video from when I took the car back to where it was built. So um, that was quite a big project by my standards. So please, uh, if you haven't already, do check that one out. And uh, until next time, it's goodbye from me. Thanks for watching.